Hello and welcome to our Sunday online service with Chester Road Baptist Church. We are so pleased you're able to join us today. My name is Danny, I'm one of the ministers at the church and later on we're going to hear from Karis, our children and families worker. Ruth, Ewan, Becky, Karis, Esther and Josh are going to lead us in our sun worship and then we're going to hear from some of our NHS and care workers and their experiences on the front line. It's really sobering but I couldn't be more proud of them. If you're here today and you're checking out Faith, we're really pleased you've stumbled across us or accepted that invitation from somebody to join us. If you're a part of another church, and I know quite a number of you now from other churches are starting to tune in to us and join with us, then you are also really welcome. For however long you need to walk with us, we're delighted to have you. And if you're part of the regular community of Chester Road Baptist Church, well, well done. You're doing great. I'm really proud of you, all of you, and how you're doing today in this lockdown season. We're going to explore a little bit more about what it means to live in this new norm in the lockdown world, particularly as we contemplate coming out of it at some point, whenever that might be. Let's just take a moment to pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are here by your Spirit, we give ourselves to you. Lead us in spirit and in truth to worship you, to hear from you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, we're going to worship. Our musicians and singers are going to lead us. And by all means, you can watch and the words will appear on the screen. If you're not familiar with the tunes, you'll soon pick them up. But you'll get far more out of it if you enter into it as worship not just a sun piece. So wherever you are, sitting down on your sofa, still snug up in bed, wherever, join in, sing out. And here's a tip for you. Turn the volume up louder than you think. Allow yourself to enter into the worship and ask Holy Spirit to lead you as you praise him. Come on, let's do it together.
John chapter 14 verses 5 to 14. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Well, yeah, I guess they open things, don't they? Like, this one opens my front door, this one opens a side gate, this one opens my door, this one also opens my door, and I guess they all have a purpose, don't they? And they are the key to get into somewhere. I mean, some of them... Like I've got one on here that lets me into a money box. But the key thing is that I have to use the right key for the right thing. Otherwise, if I use, the, if I use this key to get into the money box, for example, no matter how many twists or turns I take, it's not going to fit, is it? Let me tell you about a time where I needed a key, not a physical key, but a key item to help me. Well, when I was younger, probably about three or four years old, I was on a, a, a day out with my family, with my siblings and my grandparents, and I think my parents, but I could be wrong. Anyway, we were out on a day trip and we were in a park area where there was like a big building that you could go inside and look around. And we were having a walk and we were walking on the path with our grandparents and then my brother spotted some woods and woodland next to us and he said can we go in there can we walk through there and we'll meet you on the other side and i think my grandparents were very reluctant to say yes very reluctant but they did say yes so off we went my brother would have been about uh nine years old nine, ten years old, my sister's seven, me about three or four, as I said. And my brother had a compass and he said, don't worry, we will find the way because I've got a compass. Now, I think a long time went by. We were walking through the woods, climbing over branches, going through mud. It was so fun. But the moment we realised that we were lost and we hadn't gone near the path at all, it was a little bit scary and our grandparents said to stay by the path. Well, my mum said that she remembers me crying a lot because I was so scared and my grandparents were so worried. And my brother thought that he used the compass perfectly and the compass was the key to us finding our way out. Well, it wasn't quite like that. But don't worry, I'm here to tell the tale, so we obviously made it out of the woodland in the end. But we, quite often, when we get lost, or we are lost on our way, there is something that gets us out of that place, perhaps. And for us, it was a compass, whereas if you get lost travelling, you might use the map, and that is a key to you getting out. But today, we're going to talk about the key to life. 
Now, do you think any of these keys will get me to heaven? Do you think one of them will show me how to be close to God? Now, these keys won't do that. But what will? There is something, or rather someone, who is the way to God's kingdom. Who could that be? Oh, Jesus, of course. In our reading today, Jesus described himself as being the way, the truth and the life. Last week, we read that he was going to go to heaven and prepare a place for us. And his disciples asked him to show the way and ask what God the Father was like. And Jesus told them that he was the way and that he was the one with God. Those who knew Jesus knew God. You see, back in the very beginning, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, when they sinned, it locked the door between us and friendship with God. And it brought pain and sadness into our lives, into earthly life. Well, fortunately, God is a pretty good locksmith. You know, this person that makes keys and locks. And he had a plan to bring us back into relationship and friendship with him. And that was through his son, Jesus. He is the way that we can be saved. The way that we can draw near to God and one day go to heaven. It's not something we do ourselves, just like we can't try and fit a key into a lock. We can't force or earn our way into heaven. It is always through Jesus. When we put our faith in Christ and our trust in the death and resurrection and how that has saved us, we can be sure that we are family with God. We can talk to God, we can share our thoughts and tell him of our hopes and needs in the name of Jesus. And we know that we will be in that heavenly household one day. And we know that Jesus is present. He will never leave us. He is the key. So this morning there are some resources that I've sent out for children and perhaps older children might want to use them as well and I'll put them in the comments as well. But feel free to use them, not just this morning, but throughout the week. Do it together as a family.
noticed that over the last six, seven weeks, we've all become fluent speakers of Corona speak. I mean, as well as giving us new haircuts, this COVID-19 has given us new language. There's the obvious, social distancing, shielding, and you may now be a furloughed worker, but this Miley Cyrus, that's Cockney rhyming slam for coronavirus, well, it's given us things like coronacations, the new staycations, annual leave at home. There's still COVIDiots out there, people who behave irresponsibly during the lockdown. And then later today, millions of us will tune into the Prime Minister to hear whether this locks it, that's the process of exiting from lockdown restrictions, is going to turn out instead to be just some loxino. Lockdown exit in name only. Can you get with another one? We have entered the new norm, the new reality of how things are. Six, seven weeks ago, we thought nothing of just popping out to the supermarket for a few bits. I mean, popping out a few bits. Now it's more like the palaver of getting through the airport to the boarding gate at the far end, but without the cheeky weather spoons pint at six in the morning. How do we make sense of the new norm? What happens when we have to adjust or sharpen our understanding of reality? The disciples face the same dilemma. Living like us in unprecedented times, Jesus had been preparing them for what was to come, his death and his resurrection. It just seemed beyond comprehension. So even when he spoke very plainly to them, they still couldn't quite grasp it. You can read about it in John chapter 14. Thomas was frustrated. Jesus had told them that he was about to leave and that he would return for them. You know the way, the road I'm taking, he said. Except Thomas didn't know. I don't get what you're saying. What road? What way? Do you ever feel like that? Like everyone else seems to get it, except you. That there's probably more to this Christian living thing than you've grasped. Jesus responded to Thomas, as he does to you today, when he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That was John chapter 14, verse 6. It's quite a claim, isn't it? And yet some like Thomas at first seem to miss the point. They think it's all about some bouncer, a religious door supervisor, complete with SIA badge, blocking people from club heaven. You can't come in. You definitely can't come in. All right, you can come in. Why? Because I say so. I'm the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. But instead, Jesus was, is, well, he's opening the door for all to the new norm, a more vivid, more colourful life. He wasn't making a comment about other religions and whether one is better than the other. He wasn't defining who's out. Rather, he's making clear he was opening the door for all. And that includes you too. Jesus hadn't come to start a new religion. In fact, the label Christian was another new piece of language. Followers of Jesus and his way of doing life were only nicknamed Christians about 15 years after his death and resurrection. In Antioch, modern Turkey, in fact, they became known as Christians. We now pronounce it Christians. Think about it. Take Christ out of Christianity and you're just left with a bunch of Ians. Just as take the cross out and you're left with just Chris, come on, work with me. Before then, they were simply followers of Jesus, followers of Jesus Christ and his way. So Jesus said, I am the way. Hold on a minute. Did he just say, I am? As in, I am, the I am. Those around him knew that he was making a huge claim. Now, to find out what he was talking about afterwards, go to chesterroadbaptist.org.uk forward slash watch and check out the Going Further bonus feature for this Sunday, 3rd of May. 
we're experimenting with some additional accessible resources to help you go further, both on your own and as a small group. You'll find out more about that there. In the meantime, back to the point. Jesus was saying, you want to know how to make sense of life, how to live the best version of you. I am the way. Not a religion, not a set of holy laws, it's me. Oh, by the way, I am the way. Not just a way. Jesus was saying he is the way, the only way. He was not just pointing to the way. Jesus was, is the way. So what was his way that he was talking about? The Jesus way. Heal the sick. Cleanse and set free those with highly infectious diseases. Then it was leprosy. Today, more like COVID-19. Pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies. Have courage and stand up to oppressors. Just don't sink to their level. Defeat them with love. Use radical non-violence. It's the stuff of Gandhi and Martin Luther King. Feed the hungry. Radically include women, children, and those mainstream society excludes. Stand by those religious uptights heap shame on. Live generously, sacrificially, and ultimately invest your life to save the lives of all humanity. His way, Jesus' way, revealed the love God has for all people. Ultimately, his way was is the God way, the way to peace with God. And let's be honest, who wouldn't want peace with, even friendship with, the ultimate reality, the source of all love and life, the creator of all things? He was, is, the way to live beautifully, generously. The truth is, being generous is just a better way to live. I mean, far better than living meanly. And nobody exemplified generosity more than Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. So Jesus said, I am the way and the truth. In other words, I'm the way to discover how life works, how to live life to the full, how to see things for the way they really are. Jesus' way doesn't require the suspension of reality. Instead, it's seeing things as they really are, living life to the full, as God intended, how he wants for things for you and for me. Following Jesus and his way, it's discovering more about your true self as you were created to be. Think about this. You buy a new laptop, and it'll come preloaded with all sorts of hidden potential. You get at home, you remove the packaging, and immediately you can start using its very basic functions. But it'll do so much more if you activate its preloaded apps or software. Type that ridiculously long string of random numbers and letters. I mean, is that a one, is it an I? Well, no, maybe it's an L. And suddenly, you discover a whole new world, a new, a new norm. You see what others were telling you about. What if we humans all came into this world preloaded with a hidden spirituality app that when activated gives us a whole new experience of life, a new norm? There's something within all of us, whether you're religious or not, that instinctively looks for meaning and higher purpose. No one gazes up at the sky at night and marvels at how amazing they are. Instead, we're more often struck by a spine-tingling sense of awe and wonder at the almost incomprehensible scale, beauty and order within the cosmos. Wow, truly breathtaking. In doing so, we surrender our claim to be the master of our own universe and accept we are part of something infinitely bigger than us. Jesus' way of doing life is the way. Some people misunderstand the way. They think it's a narrow path that you can fall off, a bit like walking a tightrope. 
A wise ministry colleague of mine, David Hill, once told me that the will of God, the Jesus way, is not a tightrope that you can fall off. It's more like a field with expanse for you to have freedom, explore and run around in. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. How life is meant to be lived. Some followers like Thomas, Philip, well, they struggle with this. They think it's all about rules, religion, being seen to behave in a certain way, speak in a certain tone. Religion has squeezed the life out of them. Where's the joy? Where's the fun? Where's the life that Jesus talked about? I have come that you might have life and life in all its fullness, abundance. That's what Jesus said. Life in widescreen, life in vivid colour. Maybe you're a Christian and you need to hear again the encouragement to live life the Jesus way, to allow yourself to experience that life, to enjoy that life. And if you're not a Christian, maybe it's because you know someone who claims to be a Christian, but like Thomas or Philip, they don't appear to have what Jesus was talking about. Well, Jesus went on to say, if you follow me and my way, you'll discover the new norm. You'll find yourself instinctively doing the things that Jesus did, does. Caring for and praying for those who are sick, feeding the hungry, loving and praying for those who do you harm, standing up to oppressors, standing by those that the religious uptights heap shame on. In fact, Jesus said in verse 12, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. They will do even greater things than these. In other words, more of them, when we all do it, not just Jesus alone. Are you ready to live the new norm? Are you ready to follow Jesus and his way of doing life? To activate that spirituality app that you came into this world preloaded with? If so, the key is not some complicated string of words or numbers. It's Jesus. He is the key. His way of doing life. His reality. His life in widescreen. Maybe you've stumbled across us in recent weeks. Or you've been taking a second look. And what you've seen in the herd is different to the dry, stale, tedious, judgmental religion you understandably turned your back on whenever that was. This is the new norm, the Jesus way. He invites you to step in, to follow him in his way, his truth and his life. And in doing so, to have new friendship, new relationship with God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I'm going to pray a short prayer. It's very simple. And I'm going to invite you to join me. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you came to show us the way. Thank you that your way brings generosity, life, joy, freedom, healing, wholeness, forgiveness, justice, mercy. What a way to live. Jesus, right now, I choose to follow your way, to live your life. Send your Holy Spirit, Spirit of Christ, that I might live the Jesus way. Come upon me now, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've just found yourself praying that prayer, and like it's, it's actually meant something, we'd love to hear from you. Drop me, Liz or Karis a line. Our contact details are in the About Us section on our website, chesterroadbaptist.org.uk. Welcome to the new norm. Welcome to the Jesus way. And if you're already a Christ follower, you might like to check out the Going Further material that I was talking about earlier. Go to chesterroadbaptist.org.uk forward slash watch. 
you find that late, here later on. Bless you.
it's a, a joy and a pleasure to be uh, in conversation with these lovely people this morning. From on behalf of everyone at Chester Road, how thankful and grateful we are for the role that you guys play. We are, we can't imagine really the pressures that you're under and we're very, we're truly grateful and thankful. It can be challenging like with the coronavirus and the outbreak. It can be challenging at times, but this, in spite of, despite of everything, I enjoy my role in helping others. I know I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Pray that the coronavirus outbreak come to an end, please. I'm a, a GP at a, a surgery in Burntwood. It's a large surgery, it's 12,000 patients. And um, I'm one of the four doctors who work there. I was telling people, I don't think work is, is any less difficult or easier or anything. It's the same thing. It's the same, it's the same thing that people aren't aware of. The same cancers, the same deaths, the same looking after really, really ill people, young people, old people. Um, the only, probably the only difference now with, with COVID is that we're selective in terms of who's actually coming into the surgery. So everybody will get a telephone call and that's different. Work is still busy. I, I, I love my job and I'm, I'm glad I could, I could carry on doing it. I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. My job is to operate on people particularly who have lung cancer uh, um, uh, or other critical conditions in the chest. This has become a very different job since we started. Heartlands has been taken away. We're resetting the service in a different place with different people. We don't have the doctors that are supporting us. And um, so it's been particularly busy and in a, in a high, in, in a very challenging, complex surgery, you want the system in place to make sure it's safe and it hasn't been. But this is not life as we normally know it. I'm a senior carer in home um, for challenging behaviour. Um, so I do that. I also um, volunteer in the community. I love my job. I do love my job. It's just um, a bit difficult at the moment. It's very hard to kind of change your habits. 94, one lady, one lady is, and the other one's 87. And I know if they caught something, they would not survive it. Mm. So I am so aware of the position I'm putting them in. Although I'm trying to help them, um, I'm quite scared that I'll do injury to them. So I'm a staff nurse. I work at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Um, it's like an elderly medical ward. So um, we've been changed slightly now. So we do have the um, patients that haven't recovered as well with COVID. So we're now doing like a new therapy um, service with them, trying to get them back up and mobile and things like that. And I just feel that God has basically helped me tremendously because at the beginning of this, I'm not going to lie, I was petrified. Um, I didn't want to bring anything back to my children. But now as time's gone on, I've just prayed to God that um, he will just protect me through this moment in time. Like It's been a blessing because I know we're hearing about a lot of death, but where I am on the ward I'm, I'm on, um, although the patients have been through like, horrific times they are actually being they're getting better and they're being discharged and it's like we're seeing miracles thank you all so much we're so grateful for for all that you're doing i'd like to pray for you all now and uh, and also there are some other uh, healthcare workers in and in the congregation at chester road that are not uh, present here this morning but let's Let's just bring these concerns and let's bring, let's bring these people before God now. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you that you call each of us to, to different tasks and purposes. And I just thank you so much that you've called these people to serve you through caring, through 
uh, through medical needs, through serving in all these different ways in the NHS and through, and through uh, different caring organisations. We just give you thanks for them now. We particularly pray this morning for Maureen, for Venezia, for Hazim, for Marge and for Alicia and for others who, who do similar work as part of Chester Road Baptist Church. We just give you thanks for them, Lord, and we ask that you will strengthen them and equip them. We pray that the, the right equipment will be available for them. We pray that you will circle them, Lord, that you will keep them safe. We pray for the difficult logistics that the right things will be in place at the right time. We pray for a sense of peace for each of them in this time of just not knowing how things are going to work out. We pray for the, the things that they long to offer, such as touch, but, but those things are difficult at the moment. We pray for your wisdom for each of them, that you will guide them. And we ask, Lord, that they might be aware every moment of every day of your Holy Spirit present with them. Walk with them, we pray, Lord Jesus. In your precious name, we ask these things. Amen. 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 us to the end of our Sunday online service today. We are just so chuffed you've been able to join us. If you've got questions, want to find out a bit more about Christian faith, or maybe as we prayed that prayer, something stirred within you, something really registered, then we would love to hear from you. You can get in touch with me, Karis or Liz. Our contact details are in the About Us section on our website. Also, don't forget, afterwards, why don't you go and look at the bonus features that are available for today including the Going Further section. You'll find those by going to chesterroadbaptist.org.uk forward slash watch. 
And if you're watching this live, taking part, then we would love for you to join us in the Zoom lounge for tea and coffee afterwards. You'll find the login details underneath on our Facebook page. And finally, we meet every day, 7.30 live or catch up afterwards and then nine o'clock in the evening or again catch up afterwards for daily office. And we end each daily office with a blessing that comes from a thin place from the North Umbria community. And we're going to hear that said over to us now. One of our values as a church is that we seek to be intergenerational. And so it's quite fitting that people from a variety of different ages are going to bless us with this ancient blessing. Receive it as a blessing from heaven. This week, enjoy the way, the truth and the life that is, is Jesus' way. Make it work in your life too. Bless you. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you, wherever you may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness. May he protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.